I have been on a caregiving journey now for about five years. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. And after I wrote the book on caregiving, never thinking that I would do that five years ago, I've sort of made it my business to learn about caregiving, what's going on. And I have to tell you all that Project Compassion is at the top of the game. Because if you were to compare caregiving to the internet, remember what email and internet and all that was like 15, 20 years ago? It felt foreign. It was immature. It was in its infancy. There wasn't much happening. People were rather dubious. Remember that? I can remember saying, I'll never own a cell phone. And I said it proudly, right? <laughs> and today I'm texting Stephen. I mean, you know, who knew? But when you compare the evolution of that, and then you compare it to caregiving, we're, we're back where the internet was 15, 20 years ago. We're searching. We're, 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 we're finding the paths. And Project Compassion is finding more paths than anybody else by being a groundbreaker, by always pushing those boundaries, by creating support teams. I mean, I still see people and they'll say, what's a support team? What's a community support team? What does that look like? And I very proudly can tell them about Project Compassion. So you are in a place, in a very good place to be with respect to caregiving, working with friends and family who are ill, who may pass on, um, who need, who's, those remaining need to be helped with the grief cycle, and so on. So I'm really proud that you invited me here today. And we, in this room today, are going to take a journey that hasn't been taken before. And the reason is that each one of you has a specific caregiving journey. Do you hear me? Each one of you has a specific caregiving journey. Now, there are principles that all of us can learn from. Many are in my book. But when it comes right down to it, one size doesn't fit all. So I want you to think about your journey and we're gonna give you ways to do that today. To think about how would I customize my caregiving journey? What does it look like? I was a caregiver three times and each of those journeys was totally different. And I'll share more about that in a few moments. But they were so different that I, I could, it was like comparing apples and oranges. Now, did I ask, need to ask for help in each one? Absolutely. Was it important to create a caring community? Absolutely. Was it important to go out and build bridges, bridges and anticipate transitions? Absolutely. But in all of those general principles, it was a unique journey that I was on each one of those three times. So, are you, um, are you ready to take the journey with me? Okay. So, today, we're going to do tips and tools, but we're going to go way beyond tips and tools. We are going to take a journey that takes us from where we are. Can you all see this up here? Are you okay? All right. Where we are to another place. We're going to go to a higher realm of consciousness to an awareness that says, oh, okay. I kind of, I'm, I'm moving up the mountain and I may not be over it yet, but I can see the possibilities out there for what could, can happen. I didn't just by chance call this book Enrich Your Caregiving Journey. I was very careful about picking that verb enrich. Um, now, I'm a person who loves interaction, so I'm not going to stay up on this stage for very long. 
In fact, I'm down here now. We'll see how far this tether will let me go, right? <laughs> so tell me, what do, you, what do you think about when you think about that verb enrich? Come on, we're, we're, a, we're a group that we can share and be fine and have the confidence and there are no wrong answers or anything. So make better. Make better. Expand. Make, expand. Say go beyond. Go beyond. You think of enriched vitamins. You know, they, they give you that extra added strength. What else? Mia? Yeah. It's a strong word. It's a strong word, you bet. It is a strong word. It says, I can do it. All right? I'm there. I can do this. And so if I were to name a third overall objective beyond having lots of tips and tools when you leave here, having the beginnings of a customized, unique journey that's all yours. The third thing is to find your voice, to say, I can do it. I, as a caregiver, can change the tone of my environment. I can work with my family, even if they are somewhat dysfunctional at times, right? I can work with my friends. I can work with professionals, social workers, doctors, and so on. By the way, how many professional caregivers do we have in here? Great, thank you all for coming. So what I've been talking about is, um, are you on a caregiving journey? Are you on a caregiving journey? Yes. Absolutely. And it's unique. You're a professional caregiver. Are you also a family caregiver by any chance? No? Professional caregiver. And professional caregivers, I want you all to know, you know, sometimes we think, oh, those doctors and nurses and social workers, you know, they have the same needs as we do. They're very similar needs, especially what we're talking about today, the social the psychology, the emotional needs. In fact, um, Stephen encouraged me to share this with you, so I will. I am currently doing a project in, at Florida Hospital in Orlando, Florida. There are eight hospitals, it's a huge system. And a couple of doctors read my book and asked me if I would come and work with them on a project that's never been done before. And with this project for you professional caregivers, this is so exciting because I think it'll break new boundaries. What we are going to do is try to identify the specific scientific medical basis of emotions and their effect on the human body. And we're going to take oncology nurses, nurses dealing with cancer. We're actually going to track their blood over the course of the next year. And we're going to identify, and, and the doctors assure me, you know, for a long time, people have said, yeah, emotions make a difference. And in fact, for you, for you professionals, you know there's this term called compassion fatigue. Just getting fatigued from being a carer, a compassionate caregiver, right? So once they identify that in fact, there's a real scientific basis that emotions matter. It matters a lot to all of us. I believe that in 10 years time, we will be in a new era when sharing emotions, talking about caregiving and its stresses openly, both professionally and family. We'll, be, we'll look back on this time as an era and we say, why those were people were really in the Neanderthal era? Where were they? I and I see you I, I think we will see just a trajectory that goes up on this journey. Okay, so let's start the journey. In front of you, you have this green thing called an emotional bank account. I'd like for you, each of you find yours. And if you go, thank you, Jessica. Jessica is going to be forwarding my slides since I move around a lot. And so thank you very much. She'll save me time and trouble running back and forth here. And also, there won't be big gaps of nothingness between slides. All right, so we're going to do a self-assessment. 
of where, how are you doing? Where, where are you today? And we're going to do one with our emotional bank account. Well, first of all, what do you think of this? Do you think, uh, do you like the metaphor of thinking about uh, your emotions in a bank account? And you notice there are credits, okay? I put my plus column, right? Credits. And my debit column, minuses, all right? Um, what kind of things might be credits in an emotional bank account? Affirmations. Hmm? Affirmations. Affirmations. Okay. And an affirmation is something like what? Give me an can you give me an example? Yes, when you give praise to somebody, that's an affirmation. You did really well collaborating, bringing people together. Great. Uh, you can give them to yourself too, right? I am a good collaborator. I am important. I mean a lot to myself. All right? Those are all affirmations. What might be a debit to this emotional bank account? Guilt. Oh. Oh, yeah, I see oh, so many of you nodding. Guilt. You bet. Guilt. Yes. Fear. Fear. All right. Let's keep going. Frustration. Frustration. Right. Hmm? Criticism. Criticism of yourself and from others. Mm -hmm. Tragedy. Tragedy. A sense of helplessness. A sense of helplessness. Right. What else? Hopelessness. Hopelessness, yes, exactly. Okay, so you got it. So what I want us to do is let's take these three areas, balance, simplicity, and response. And I'm gonna give you some examples. So what do I mean by balance? Well, a, a metaphor, this would be a journey kind of metaphor. I grew up in the Middle West and on a farm. So yes, folks, I can milk cows, I can bale hay, I can decastle corn, and all those things. And I had a father that was very, you know, let's move it along. Even when we took family vacation. So I remember one vacation. We set out just west of Chicago, a place near Rockford, Illinois. You maybe have heard of it. And we were going out to the Badlands. And we were going to go out and we were going to see uh, Mount Rushmore. And my father said, we can make Sioux Falls in the next 12 hours. <laughs> so we're going to make Sioux Falls in the next 12 hours. And I can remember my mother kind of looking like, OK. Well, of course, what he was thinking is we, he was going to drive to Sioux Falls. The destination was all important. I've got to get there soon, quickly, right? And the rest of us were thinking, but Dad, we thought this was a vacation, you know? So I related to caregiving because, by the way, I've made all the mistakes. I just want you, I forgot to tell you that early on. You hear me say this? I have made every mistake in the book, in that book and in other books. I've made all these mistakes. Because when you're a caregiver, it kind, of, it kind of flips your life a little bit and it throws you off, even your strengths, doesn't it? It kind of goes, Pew! you know. So I've made all these mistakes. So I too have, as a caregiver, thought, got to get this done. Got to get the bath in, got to get the, you know, the medicine, got to get the meal, da da da. And then at the end of it, thinking, Oh, along the way, did I listen? You know, was I in balance with my loved one? Did we, um, did we chuckle a little bit along the way? Um, and the answer early on was, no, we didn't do that. So that's what I mean by balance. Another example would be uh, taking care of yourself while taking care of others. And we have some sessions for you about that today. You know. Just always spending time taking care of yourself while you're taking care of others. Really important. So on your emotional bank account, on the back, write the word balance, and I want you to give yourself a one to three rating. 
right now, today, where are you today, right at this very moment, on balance? A number one is I'm not there. A number two is I'm okay. And a number three is I'm pretty good. All right? And, 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 and you don't have to think about this too long. You know, you just kind of say, because on these kinds of things, it's kind of good to just go, all right, let me just give this a number. So, everybody done with that? Got it? All right. Simplicity. Well, this one is all about what would you imagine as a caregiver? Keep it simple. What would this be about? Yes. Not trying to be perfect. Oh, yes. Because we want to be perfect in the eyes of our loved one. This person loves us. This person has taken care of us in the past. And we want to do the very best. So guilt, when we start thinking about maybe doing something for ourselves. And uh, yeah. So that's what simplicity is all about. Stepping back, delegating, finding other people to help you, creating a caring community, like Project Compassion does so well, right? and getting rid, eliminating all of the extraneous stuff that you don't really need to do, but think you need to do. You know, I need to make a cake, and I need to make the perfect cake, and it has to be three layers like he always liked, and it has to have a certain kind of frosting. Not necessarily. Keep it simple. You know, just make the cake. Right. So give yourself a one, two, or three <coughs> on simplicity. One, no, I'm not being very simple. Two, I'm okay at it. Three, I'm pretty good. All right. All right. And finally, response. Now this is the toughest one of all in my estimation because it has to do with communication and talking with other people. And I don't know about you, but I'm a pretty good communicator when I'm not under stress. When I'm under stress, I can get kind of bossy. I get, you know, my nerves get up, <laughs> do this, do that. So by response, it's by responding to everything around you. Your family, your friends, your loved one, the doctors, the nurses, the social workers, the person at McDonald's. I mean, come on, it's about response. And I can tell you, you know that feeling when you responded not so well? I feel it comes from my solar plexus down here in my tummy, kind of rises up. And I feel flushed, actually. There's a chemical response in my body when I have not responded particularly well. Do any of you have that same? Yeah. You know it. And you go, you, I, what I do, I go, Oof. Shouldn't have done that. Okay? Yes? I, I feel one the other way, too. When I go the extra mile, and, you know, I was at a restaurant the other day, and I went up back up to the people, and I thanked them. It was one of those who get the food right away, you know. I said, that was delicious. Thank you. And the guy was beaming. Yes. So I get it the other way as well. Yes. And I felt so good, just that little thing. Exactly. I, I, I thank you so much for adding that in. It is a different feeling, isn't it? it okay. Okay. But, and you know that one too. It's like, it's, it's almost better than yoga. In fact, it is better than yoga. It's better than working out. There's this wonderful feeling, glow that comes over you. Just, it all kind of washes away. So that's what we're talking about with response. And today we're going to do a lot of work in all three of these areas. All right? So a quick assessment, one, two, or three on response. All right. Now what I'd like for you to do is I want you to get together with another person. Just get in pairs, all right? And I want you to share with this other person and the other person with you the area where you would like to work on the most. And you might even give these three things, like a one, two, or three. Like, I want to work on simplicity first, and responsiveness second, and a thirdly balance, or however you want to do it, okay? So share with another friend 
um, I'll give you about five minutes, all right? And here's the thing, not only say, I want to get in better balance, but try to give this partner a specific on what you would like to correct in that area. Don't just let yourself off the hook with, well, I want to get better in balance, period. What do you want to do to make that happen? Be as specific as possible. Everybody with me? Okay, go. This table, let's see. Here. I'm thinking, would you mind? I'm thinking if you two, would you two work together? And then you two, and then those two? Sure. Would you mind working with her? Because she's, you two are the fifth person at each of these tables. Okay. Would you mind doing that? Thank you. Matter of fact, I get the sympathy vote that way. I'm going to explain to them why I'm doing this right after that. A good group. One more minute. pull you back together. Thanks so much for getting right into this. That's terrific. 
And um, as we go through the day, just keep thinking about that emotional bank account and how am I filling it up? How am I filling it up? Okay, thank you so much, this is great. Now you may wonder why I have all these cords on me. Well, uh, Project Compassion and another organization as well as my own, eCare Diary, we are teaming up to try to get as much caregiver information out to the world as possible. Because as I mentioned earlier, things like this don't happen very often in our world. Uh, caregivers don't have opportunities to come together and really talk. And so what we want to do is take pieces of what I'm saying today and putting it out there for other caregivers. So that's the purpose of the camera and why we're doing all of this. Now, also, and I don't mean, you know, this is, this is all optional for you, but I have a flip camera as well. You know, one of those little deals that flips out and you take little movies. And for anybody who wants to uh, come up and be videotaped today, I'd be happy to do that, any of you caregivers, if you want to share something about yourselves. So I'll give you that opportunity. If you don't want to take it, that's fine too. But um, I think it's so important that caregivers know that other people are out there because you know we're a group, you, for each one of us today, there are thousands of caregivers in the United States sitting out there alone at their homes right now. So the more we can get information to them, the better. All right, let's continue on our journey. Jessica, if you would uh, switch the... So on this journey uh, that we're gonna take and what makes you unique is you gotta think of yourself. What are your, what's your personality like? Every personality is gonna be a different caregiving style or journey. Um, what are your interests? What are your skills? Where do you come from? And if you wanna take notes about this in your notebook that uh, Project Compassion has provided you, great. Um, you'll be given an opportunity in several of the sessions to think about your strengths and about your interests and how they work into the caregiving journey. But if you wanna take notes, feel free. So my recommendation is when you're starting your journey, think about who you are as a person. Are you a private person or are you a very gregarious person? It makes a difference in what your journey is like. Um, what kind of skills do you have? Uh, were you an engineer by profession? Were you a nurse? Um, were you a librarian? They're all very different. Um, I was in a session yesterday, and I've heard this comment before, that people who come to the caregiving journey, and especially if you have siblings, and each one has a different profession, you're, you're all, your mindsets are all different when it comes to when mom and dad get ill. So. <laughs> The, the librarian's going to have, okay, I need to go research it. I need to go, you know, look up every detail and make sure I got all the data. And maybe the, um, the artist, the visual artist in the family, the sibling says, oh, we just need to trust our intuition, right? Which drives the librarian crazy. <laughs> so these things are very important, just not only for you, but when you consider your family. And where are they coming from? What are their skills and interests? And it will help you be more empathic and your response to them will be more compassionate because you'll go, I know she's a librarian. I know she's got to have all that information. And you see, so I think I, you get my point. So just think about this as a part of your journey. Okay, Jessica, your passengers. Well, those passengers are your family and your friends. Who's on the bus, I like to say, right? Who's on your caregiving bus, right? Now, in my journeys, I had lots of people on the bus in one caregiving journey, and when it came to working with my husband, there were only two of us. So there was only one other person. I had one passenger. Which do you think was hardest? This is a trick question, by the way. Which do you think was hardest? You're saying one. The other one is not. Actually, they were both hard for different reasons. The more people, the more support I had. But 
the more support I had, what did I have to do? I had to coordinate all that, right? With one passenger, it's just the two of you. You know that song, just the two of us. <laughs> and we were bopping along in the bus and it was feeling real empty because it was just the two of us. And I'll explain a little bit more later. So you gotta think about who's on your bus. That's really important to that caregiving journey. Yes, ma'am. Can you describe that multiple passenger scenario a little bit of having a hard time? Well, if you have a lot of passengers, for example, with my mother, uh, there were a number of, there was my dad, and so we had multiple passengers on that bus. So you're and, all passengers with people you're carrying for? Uh, no. You have just the one person I was caring for, which was our mother. But on that bus were my father, my brother, my husband, uh, my brother's wife, the children. So it was, it was an extended family. Yeah, thank you for helping me clarify that. Absolutely. So, th so all of that made a big difference, you know, those multiple people, because we had a lot of support. Yeah. Did you, did you have a comment? Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I agree with that. And you have to have other people involved and uh, have different ideas, and you can see the frustration in them it makes things worse, because they're not around you as much as you are. They don't know as much about what's going on all yes. the time as you do. Yes. And they, they think they can make quick decisions for you. Yeah. And they leave. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. They get on. I love it. So they, metaphorically, they get on the bus, and then they get off the bus. And then they might get on the bus, <laughs> you know, in another town or two, and then they get back off the bus. That is so frustrating to a caregiver, isn't it? And so, what you, so my feeling about that is, what do you think I, what, what do you need to do? Anticipate that that may happen, probably will happen. Try to have a plan to keep them informed over time when they're not around to make sure they get informed. What, here's what I did. I asked my niece who her skill was she was an English major at, at Furman, down in uh, Greensboro, or yeah, Greensboro, South Carolina, or is it Green, Greenville, South Carolina. And I asked her to send emails to the rest of the family. And I would keep just her informed, and then she would spread the information. And that kept it, that, that way I didn't have to do it with everybody. And I took her skill, because she loved to write, and she'd put some flourishes into it, right? And get that out to the whole family. But you are absolutely right, sir. That is one of the big frustrations about having a lot of passengers on the bus. But if you can get them corralled, it's a huge uh, support system, too. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Maybe the others are not interested. Hmm? What if the others are not interested? Ah, on the other hand, what if they're not interested? Um, you know what? I just still feed information to people who, aren't in, who don't seem to be interested because their interests may have other reasons why they appear not to be interested. But I like to keep everybody informed and the reason is that if, when, and if they do become interested then they've got the information. They don't go, well, you left me out and so therefore I'm, you know, not interested. Yeah. Does that make sense or are you? Yeah. 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 Well, and I would, here, here's my challenge for you. I think maybe they are interested, perhaps, maybe not, but maybe they are. And maybe, uh, you know, interpreting another generation's behaviors, it can be difficult, can it? So they could be interested, but they are busy with their lives and they're, they, they appear to you, not, whoops, not to be interested. Just a thought to think about. Okay, so passengers on the bus, this is important. Who are they? I'm sure there are some of you who want to kick some passengers off your bus. <laughs> so just think about how you would respond to that, right? 
in a gentle, tactful way. All right. And your emotional bank account. And we've done the fuel part. We've done the fuel. The fuel is made up of three component parts, balance, simplicity, and response. There's your fuel. And so we're in the process of getting refueled. Um, for me, I'm an emotional person, so I had to stop at a gas station pretty frequently, I'm just talking metaphorically now, to get more emotion into my emotional bank account. I knew I couldn't go 200 miles. I knew I, knew I needed to stop every 70 or 75 miles to pull myself up, to be around people who would compliment me. I'm just that kind of person. I know it, and so I deal with that. Other people, you know, you probably know people who say, I don't need any praise. I'm just fine, thank you. Well, they probably do need some, but maybe they're a 200-mile person or maybe a 500-mile a person. I'm a 75-mile person. I need emotional support. All right, Jessica? And then, so what are the variables? Well, you know, the length of the journey. Um, how many of you have been caregivers for more than three years? Mm -hmm. um, for less than three years. <laughs> okay, right. So the journey varies. My first journey was six months. My second was a year. My third was two and a half years. So it's that length and that, that emotional resilience that to keep you going for two and a half years. So depending on the length, all of these things get more, more magnified, don't they? That emotional bank account needs, perhaps as you go on your journey, you need it only uh, fill up every 200 miles. But now, as you're into your second or third year, you need to stop more frequently. That's my guess. The more chronic the illness that you're dealing with, the more you've got to keep that fuel in the fuel tank. All right. And the topography. I like to think of my first journey, which I call um, a clash of values. And that clash of values took me and my brother